Alright, good afternoon. We are team 5 in section 6 and we're called Electro Boys. Again, we're team of 4 and our team consists of Ellen Diaz, Yungi Lee, and Ming Seok Kim. Uh, using the over block diagram, I will walk you through who's responsible for what subsystem. So here's the overall block diagram. Uh, Ellen Diaz will be responsible for the station hall control. Ming Seok Kim will be responsible for cruise control. I will be in charge of train brain and Yungi will be in charge of train power. First, the usual may uh, put a desired speed on the mat like boogie on the cruise control side. The train will maintain the speed no matter if there's a, a curve or a load on the train. <coughs> also, the auto halt control button may be pressed, located in the station halt control side, and the train will be brought to a precise stop the next time it passes the station. Also, there are visual indicators on the train power rail car, uh, one for the pedal advanced road control, so if there's a full speed, the, all the 10 light LEDs will turn on. If there's no speed, all will, will be turned off. Also, there will be a buzzer on the train power rail so that the, if the direction changes, there will be a buzzer for like two seconds approximately. Also, uh, we can, uh, user can block the IR. Uh, IR. Uh, if the block is less than two, two seconds, the train will have to maintain the speed no matter what. After two seconds, there will be a buzzer and it will be uh, stopped in a, uh, a slow uh, rate. Also, the speed data loss indicator is located on the station side. So if there is a signal, the LED will be uh, turned on. However, if there is no uh, signal, the LED may be turned off to indicate that the speed is not uh, input. Uh, our final bottom line cost was $47.40, and which we met the requirement. I will, I will pass on to first control to explain this many uh, uh, The main requirement for the cruise control was for the user to be able to enter a speed and maintain the speed. Here, here you can see that the user can input the, the speed, and that speed is converted into a binary value, which is then sent to a digital to analog converter. Here, in the PWM generator, a triangle wave is compared to the output of the D2A converter and the desired PWM duty cycle is generated. To calculate the speed, the speed data is obtained from the train brain, and a post counter is count the number of posts of the speed, and it is integrated with the microcontroller to the multi vibrator. And the, the user is also able to see the actual speed and the input speed through the GUI. The plot on the left is the output of the PWM and you can see that the accuracy is about 0.3% on the right side is the integration from the counter to the microcontroller the top signal is the sampling speed which is 1 hertz and this is the send bit signal and the reset signal for the counter and the manufacturing test has been successfully completed for the cruise control next Alan Diaz will speak about the station hall control <clears throat> the station hall control subsystem will bring the train to a control stop at a precise location in the station. Uh, the design consists of two selected lines, line 40 and 250, to give maximum uh, space between the lines in order to slow down first and then stop. The <clears throat> The, cap, the station, the subsystem is activated by a stop a station button, push button. Then, in order to slow down, we use a 60% duty cycle PWM and to stop a 50% duty cycle PWM. Then the PWM selector will output the correct and appropriate PWM to cruise control and the override signal to stop the train. We can see here in pink, that's the NTSC signal, uh, video signal of uh, line 40 and here's my, uh, this straight line here is my threshold so whenever the train comes we can see a spike here and through a competitor we can see that there is motion in this way we can detect motion in the station and bring the train to a control stop now Hyun Q, uh, 
Jason will start to talk about trend brain and communications. Yeah, um, I'm Jason Yun and I'm responsible for the trained brain. Here's my self-system block diagram and it is 100% finished. Uh, the first, I have an IR transmitter uh, provided by the uh, user. I have an IR receiver and the IR receiver signal gets uh, averaged using a low pass filter. So I have two low pass filters, actually two average values, one when it's going forward, the other when going backwards. Also, if the signal is lost, I, I generate one more uh, average data and I sample it uh, continuously. So I actually have three average data to work from, and I use those three average data uh, and to put into a multiplexer to choose uh, a diff uh, different uh, possibilities. I also have a, when this is lost, I also have a two-second counter so that after the two seconds is passed, I uh, make the buzzer sound, and after the two second, I actually have a sample data pass through a capacitor so that the well, average voltage dies out so that the train moves uh, to a station uh, control stop. I have a comparator uh, at the output of my uh, low pass filter so that I have a stretch voltage of about 2 volts so if it's higher than that, uh, the average data will be 1 otherwise it will be 0. For the tractile optical sensor, I have an RF transmitter at a carrier frequency of about approximately 3 kilohertz. It will be sent through an RF link and received by an AM transmitter, uh, air receiver provided. I will have a comparator uh, that I'll show in the next slide. The, the result will be a 5 millisecond of TTL pulse. Also, I have a signal detector on the station side, as I told you before, and when the signal is lost, uh, there will be a LED that will be turned on. Also, the average voltage I forgot to mention gets compared with the triangular wave I've generated with LM5.5 so that the uh, duty cycle can be changed. Uh, here's one plot uh, for the speed data. The channel 1 is the output of the optical sensor. Whenever there is a rising edge, I generate this modulus signal about uh, 5 minutes in 10 long. Channel 3 is the uh, AM receive signal straight off from the radio. I pass the threshold voltage right above here so that the output will get 5 minutes in pulse to the cruise control. Uh, the speed data, uh, actually I had a little problem with the AM receiver, but I managed to fix it and it's working properly now. I'll pass it on to Chunky for training how <coughs> okay, This is strain power block diagram. Uh, purpose of this strain power is to supply stable and constant power to the train power, and train brain, and also to the train motor. Um, basically I have two converters. One is for 5 volts and one is for 12 volts. I have a 1 inch bridge and I have a 2 indicator. One is for the direction change and one is for the 3 second filter for speed. Uh, one issue we had in this final 5 5 timer was um, the power from the rail through the train was low. So I only had a um, 2.8 peak to peak uh, PWM, which goes to my um, DC to DC converter of 12 volts. So I wasn't getting the 12 volts enough. So I used the shift inverter to double the input at the output. So the input of 2.8 double to 5 and it's gonna make a 12 volts output and it uh, is successful in maintain, maintaining higher speed. Um, this is 5 volts output. I have a peak to peak of 130 millivolts and 12 volts has um, 600 millivolts. And this is a um, H bridge output of 50% DB cycle at um, amplitude of 11.8. Um, and we are set to start the demo. 